What's up, Rock You Church, man? It is good to be back with you tonight for Midweek Bible Study. Now, we've been going back and forth between Instagram and YouTube, and we're still trying to figure out which is the best platform to reach you guys. So, man, put something in the chat. Send us a message. We want to know how can we best reach you and how can we best deliver the Word of God to you in a convenient and comfortable way for you to receive it even while you are away from the campus. Well, listen, man, I will come be youth pastor here at the Fountain of Praise, and I believe today God's got a mighty word for you. Well, let's pray and get right into it. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for this message. I thank you for this word. God, I thank you that just as it says in Joshua chapter one, that do not be afraid or discouraged because you are with us wherever we go. So God, we thank you that even as we enter into the field of athletics, playing football or maybe being in the band or being in any part of football, God, we thank you that you're here with us. Whether it be any sports, God, we thank you that you're here with us. God, I thank you that even as we travel down the road and we're going different places while we're at school, while we're at home, while we're at work, God, you're with us. We're so grateful for your presence. We thank you for your peace because even in the midst of distractions and stress, we thank you that we can call to you for your word says that you give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So God, we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your presence. And God, we thank you for a joy that supersedes anything that can try and stop us. Bless this message, bless this day. Help us to receive something. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, amen, amen. Listen, all right, so we are still in our series of I'm not back, I'm better. But I want to talk to you about how do we manage the stress when we come back? I'm not stressed because I'm better is what we're talking about today. I'm not stressed because I'm better. Now, here's the truth. Stress is going to show up whether we're looking for it or not. But today I want to talk to you how we can manage our stress. But here's the quote that I want to give you as we start out. Here's the quote. Stress is like fire. Unless you extinguish it, it will burn you. Well, you know what I mean. If we allow the stressors of our life, whether it be academics, whether it be the responsibilities of our house, or even the concerns about what scholarships we'll get or what colleges we'll go to or whatever it is, we can allow that stress to be so consuming that it can consume us. And, And it'll be like a fire that unless we extinguish these stresses, unless we find a way to address the stress, it can burn us out. Well, I want to give you a Bible story of a woman who had some stressful situations and give you some tips on how you can manage your stress. Well, here's the story. In the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, read it with me. It says, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Friends, I love that. It says a certain village and a certain woman. I believe that nothing that God does is by accident, happenstance or chance. It's no accident that you're here today. So I believe that just as much as Jesus entered a certain city, he's entering into your certain place and has a message certainly for you. And it says, and she had a sister called Mary. Uh, Well, Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted with much serving And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Is that anybody else's story? You, you, mom or dad has asked you to clean the house or do the dishes or do something. And you're doing, it seems like you're doing all the work and your brother or your sister is sitting there watching TV, playing on their PlayStation, playing on their uh, Nintendo Switch or whatever. And you're looking at mom like, you don't see them? You, you, you don't see me sweating my life away and, and it looks like they just chilling. That's Martha's story. Martha was like, I'm doing all this work and my little sister is just kind of getting away with nothing. Well, I'll just explain this a little bit more. Let's keep reading. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Three things I want to talk to you today in regards to how we manage our stress. Here's the first one. When we talk about what's happening with our stress in this story, Martha hears that Jesus is entering into her city. 
When she sees that Jesus is entering to her city, she runs to her door, goes outside, and she says, Jesus, I want you to come and have dinner at my house. She welcomes him into her home, and when Jesus gets into her house, her sister Mary sits at the feet of Jesus while Martha is frantically trying to clean the house, prepare the food, and get everything ready for Jesus. Now, I don't know about you. Do y'all have moms or dad or whoever that when they say company's coming over, they got you cleaning the house from top to bottom, sometimes even a room that the guests will never be in. But because they want to make sure that the house has a good showing for the guests, they want you to clean everything. And then you're sitting there like, Mom, really? Are they, are they going to go in the attic? Mom, are they seriously going to look behind the toilet? I think that was what was happening with Martha. Martha was trying to make the house spick and span for this unexpected guest that she wanted to please. Well, I think that's us too, is that we have expectations in life. And and because we have these expectations, we're trying to make everything perfect in order for our expectations to come true. Well, you want to get into the perfect school, so you're trying to get the perfect grades, and so you're having the perfect community service, and you're trying to be the perfect student, and you want to have the perfect job, and you want to be perfect in your academics and in your athletics, and, and you want to be perfect this, perfect this, perfect this, perfect this, and you're doing all these things trying to be perfect, and you've forgotten why you were being perfect in the first place. The goal was college. The goal was getting out of school <laughs> and, and not being perfect. Uh, here's what happens. This is the first thing that I want to tell you when we talk about this message of Martha frantically trying to clean her house and Mary seemingly to be haphazardly sitting at the feet of Jesus. The first thing I want to tell you is this. Focus on the main thing. I want to encourage you to prioritize your time. You must think about like in the course of your day, in the 24 hours that you have in a single day, how are you prioritizing your time? What things matter most? Uh, uh, There was a guy named Stephen Covey. He wrote a book. He talks about first things first. We talk about putting the big rocks in, the big things that you need to take care of first, and then get to the little things. It's easy to be distracted by all the little things and miss the big thing that matters most. What is the major thing that must be taken care of today? Before you get distracted and and, and does my shoes look good enough, does my shirt or my hat or my hair or or does this person like me or that person not like me and and did I do this, did I, then what is the main thing? Did you do your homework? Did you wake up on time? Did you do what you needed to do today? What matters most in the moment? Something I want to encourage you to do that I know I'm always doing a lot of things and trying to figure out what's the best way to get through my day. And I'm, I'm, and I'm multitasking a lot of times. And what I've learned to do in the midst of my multitasking is if I get a stray thought that comes in, I'll write it down. I, I keep a journal or I keep my phone on me. And so what I'll do is I'll write it down so that I can complete the task that I'm doing. And then I can take care of the, thought, the, the thing that I was coming to my mind. Because if I get distracted doing something else, more than likely I won't go back and finish what I had started. I love, here's the quote, keep first things first. My question to you also is, how are you starting your day? How are you starting your day? When we talk about keeping the main thing the main thing, how do you start your day? Do you slide out of the bed and immediately start stressing about what you need to get done? Do you slide out of the bed and immediately run out the door because you're late for the bus? What's the first thing that you do? I've told you on more than one occasion, the first thing I do before my feet hit the floor is I speak to God. I I roll over, I grab my cell phone, and and I read my devotional. Here's the truth. If God considers me so special, how dare I not give him the first part of my day? If it's God that gives me the ability to do great things, how, why would I not give him the first part of my day? The, The first moments of my day, I go, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me a new day and new mercies and a new opportunity to be and prove that you are proud of me, to use all of my talents to the best of my ability. God, thank you for today. God, give me peace and help me to do my best today. Before I make another move, I give God thanks. And then I read my little morning devotional and I get my day going. Here's my thing. It takes 10 minutes to tell to tell God and give thanks. Think about all you do in the morning. I think God is worth the first few minutes of your day. Here's the second thing that I want to give you is I want to encourage you to rest and practice mindfulness. Remember, Martha was stressing out and, and tripping on the fact that Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. But if we go back and look at the story, here's the truth. Jesus never said he was hungry. 
Jesus never said, let me see all the corners of your house and make sure they're spick and span. He merely was walking through. Martha invited him in. And before Martha found out what Mary needed, she went to do things that she thought that he expected. How many times have you stressed yourself out trying to meet expectations that were never even presented to you? I I love what Mary did. Before Mary went to see what she could do to please Jesus, I mean, before Mary went to just go do what she thought Jesus needed to be pleased, she sat at the feet of Jesus and was wondering, what is it that that Jesus needed from her? That goes back to my first point is before you begin your day, you should begin at spending time with Jesus. That you should say, before I, before, I begin to, uh, before I begin to do things, I need to ask, what is it that you need of me? I think that can fit in a lot of areas in life. I like how the Bible says, be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to wrath. There's something to be said about taking a moment to see what needs to be done before assuming what needs to be done. Now, the, the old quote is, when you assume, you make a, well, well, you know how it goes. But also in this second part of taking a moment, to rest and practice mindfulness, I wanna encourage you to breathe. You know, a lot of times the way we can manage our stress is by breathing. My children, I always tell them that when they find themselves getting angry and frustrated to not just emote or start fussing or screaming, but to take a moment and breathe. One of the breathing exercises that I usually recommend is take two quick breaths into your nose and one long breath out through your mouth. And by doing that, it causes you to focus on your breathing. One of the other things that I want to tell you is I want to remind you that our words are louder than our thoughts. When you find your thoughts tending to overwhelm you with all the stress and the stuff that you need to get done, you've got to speak to yourself. You've got to tell yourself that I will not allow this to control me. The Bible says we are to arrest those thoughts. And the way we arrest those thoughts is not by thinking more thoughts. We arrest those thoughts by speaking to ourselves. I love how the Bible says we speak to the mountain and it will be removed and cast into the sea. Sometimes the mountain is not in front of us. Sometimes the mountain is inside of us. And if you can speak to mountains and tell them to move outside of you, why not speak to the mountains inside of you that tell you you can't do all the things that God has called you to do? I remember this time that I was super stressed out in life and I wasn't certain how to to deal with the things that I was dealing with. And I remember speaking to God. I was driving in my car and I said, God, I'm so overwhelmed by everything that I have going on. And would you believe God answered me back? Now, I'll be honest. He didn't go, William, my child, here's what you should do. What happened was I remember sitting there going, God, I'm so stressed about the things. How do I handle the stress? Would you believe God answered me? Here's what he said. I believe he said this. He said, you're not overwhelmed, you're unorganized. I believe that when we organize our day, we prioritize the things that matter, that we'll find that our day is, is easier done when we plan it. When we're unorganized and we're just trying to figure things out on the run, it'll stress us out. But by saying, okay, on Monday I do this, on Tuesday I do this, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or even if you look at your week from the beginning and not in the middle of it, you'll see that if you can handle the big things by the time Friday comes along, you're not stressing to get your homework done so you can go out on the weekend because you knew it was coming. Here's the truth. We can avoid things that we are prepared for. And here's the truth. We plan to fail when we fail to plan. I'm going to challenge you to take a moment and think. Here's the last one I want to give you. Build community. The truth is, there's a quote that I love. It says, it's not the weight, but how you carry it. I know that a lot of times we we tend to unnecessarily pack on things because we feel like we've got to be the one. Maybe you're the older brother or the older sister and you're like, well, I know mom's working, so I'm going to carry this weight for her. And and I know mom's going to get off. I'm going to carry this weight and I'm going to carry this and I'm going to pick on this and I'm going to pick this on. And, And sometimes we find ourselves burdened unnecessarily with things. Or maybe we're trying to do the most for your friends and you're taking on all of their weight and you find yourself pressured under all this because you're trying to meet the expectations of everyone and you're not taking care of yourself. I love the quote that says it's not the weight, but it's how you carry it. Stop carrying things that you can pass on to other people. There are things that you can say, listen, if if you have a group project, don't do the whole project for everybody. Optimize the team, encourage the team, say, listen, there are some things that need to be done. And if someone's not pulling their weight, then that's the time you go to them. The Bible says that you have ought with your brother that you speak with them. 
Don't just take it on and be like, well, I'm not going to say anything to them because I just don't want to deal with the conversation. No, listen, there are times you need to say, listen, you're not pulling your weight and it's causing pressure on me. You also need to with your brothers and sisters and be like, listen, I know I'm trying to keep the house clean so mom won't get mad when she gets home. But you might need to have a conversation with your brother and sister and say, listen, you got to pull your weight, too. I need you to pick your clothes up. I need you to help with the laundry. I need you to help with the dishes. But just the same, I want to encourage you to have friends around you that when you feel yourself weighted by life, that will hold you up. There's a story in the Bible of Moses. The Bible says that there was this battle and Moses was whenever he would hold his arms up, they would win. But whenever his arms would come down, they would lose. And so he had these two brothers, Aaron and Hur. And they noticed that whenever Moses' arms would get weak, they would lose. So instead of saying, Moses, I'm going to go pray for you, they stood on his left and his right and they held his arms up. They, They put a rock underneath them. They allowed him to sit and they held his arms up. That's the power of community and, and the way we can manage our stress, the way we can focus and prioritize our life is having quality friends that can see when we're struggling and saying, listen, let me help you handle the weight or let me show you how to better manage the weight that you're carrying. Friend, beyond those friends that we have externally, I want to remind you of this friend named Jesus. This friend that said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. This friend that says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This friend that says call to me and I'll give you answers beyond your imagination. He's trying to tell you, friend, that you don't have to manage the stress alone. He says I'll be with you and help you to get through it. When we try to figure everything out ourselves, it can be overwhelming. That's why the Bible says this says um, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? But the Bible also talks about how uh, we should, what is, it? what is the word? Oh, I lost it. It'll come to me. He talks about how um, lean not to thy own understanding. There it is. Thank you, God. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. If you want a peaceful path, pray to God. And I guarantee what he'll do is he'll, he'll begin to reveal things to you to show you how can you, how can you hand off weight. He'll, he'll show you what things need to pray, be priority. He'll show you those moments where you need to sit and breathe. I didn't think that Martha was wrong for wanting the house to be right for Jesus. I don't think Martha was wrong for welcoming Jesus into her house. But the challenge I have with Martha is she was trying to see, she was trying to do what she thought Jesus needed without even asking of him. And maybe you're doing everything that you think that Jesus requiring from you before you even speak to him and say, God, what is it that you require of me? Do that today. Spend some time this evening in this presence. And before you go to bed, I want you to put your phone to the side, turn off the TV a little earlier. And before, instead of just uh, last thing you do is a scroll and sleep, maybe the last thing you do is pray in peace. Ask God to give you rest and prepare you for the next day. Friend, the only way this works is having a relationship with him. And maybe you're watching today and you're like, this makes sense to me. The reason I'm stressed is not because I have too much on me. The reason I'm stressed is that I'm not organized with the stuff that I do carry. The reason I'm stressed is that I'm not taking time to the recording of my day to rest. The Bible says uh, that when Jesus created the world, he worked for six and he rested on the seven. Maybe the reason you're stressed is you're not resting. There's recovery and rest. There's regeneration and rest. There's peace and rest. I would encourage you to rest. And I want to encourage you to have good family and friends to help you out along the way. Friend, let me pray with you today. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, here's what the Bible says. He says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus, he he died on the cross and that God raised him from the dead, the Bible then says that you're saved. But that's not the end. The next part is getting into a family of believers that will walk this faith walk with you. If you've never said that prayer before, or maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Father God, I'm sorry. I repent of my past. I I repent of trying to do it all my way. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead just for me. Jesus Christ, be my peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, that's the whole prayer. I told you earlier, he said, he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, submit your request to God. And it says, and the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding will come upon you. You don't have to be stressed. We can't make stress go away forever, but we can manage it by the one who gives us the ultimate peace we need by trusting him and giving him our problems. 
friend, I want to help you out with that. If you want to know more about The Rock, visit us online here at YouTube or on Instagram at RockTFOP. Bless you. We'll see you the second Sunday in September at Fountain Life Center. God bless.